All right, hello YouTube and welcome to today's Gems of War video. The video I have for you in my Swords Edge Scouting Report, which is for the week of February 12th through February 8th. The Swords Edge is right over there, kind of along the west side of the map. It is an Ice Kingdom with an armor bonus, which doesn't sound as useful as it really is. Its uh, predominant troop type is Knight, so we'll see a lot of humans there as well. Its maximum power is already at 30, which is the cap for Gems of War, so it's not going to go any higher than that. So, is Sword's Edge a good uh, kingdom to get to level 20? It depends. Good th the good thing for Sword's Edge is there are no magic or attack kingdoms to use ice, beads, and books. So, Sword's Edge is a little bit closer to the top than you might think, given that it's an Your other options for armor are Midnight, Glacial Peaks, and Leonis Empire. Now, of those four, uh, I would almost discount uh, Midnight for now, because Midnight is such a new kingdom that maximum power level is not good. You're not going to need Midnight to be level 20 for our reason for quite a while. Now, Glacial Peaks' max power is 28, but it only needs two more troops to get to, which it could easily get the next time we have Glacial Peaks. So it's viable. And now, Leonis Empire is also possible to get to power level. Now, so Typically, it will come down to those two. And for that, I would say start looking at your faction because once you go between 15, at level 17, level 19, you'll gain a bunch of horde stats for that particular faction. So if you're having trouble with Crypt Keepers, then you should go for Swords Edge. If you're doing okay with Crypt Keepers and you'd rather get the bonus for City of Thieves, you can go there. A Glacial Peaks is, a faction is Mirrored Halls. Not sure if you really need to go for the faction bonuses for that one because it really comes down to knowing the strategy to get through a pure faction 500. But uh, having extra stats will make it take and that could be a good thing. Otherwise, it will take a long time. Okay, so let's go through the core four and four more for Swords Edge. Now, I will point out, just in case this becomes... I, I have a feeling this will become... Um, the This is the first time that we're having epic trials for Swords Edge. So just like probably the first... The, the two kingdoms prior to this... I'm expecting that the class, that the epic trial teams might change. So in case they do, I'm going to give you kind of an assessment of the core four, assuming that they're in, but also giving you an idea of what to do if they're not. Let's start with Man at Arms. Man at Arms does, gives magic-based attack and armor to ally, probably the first one, barriers them. Overall, it's interesting. It is a bounty hunter troop, so you're only really getting two traits. But I, there's other Forge Edge Knights that do what he does, but better. So unless he's actually in the Epic Trials for Sword Edge Week, I think you can get, give him a... And same thing can be true for the Knight Captain. In fact, the Knight Captain is even less useful than Man at Arms. So again, if she if she is available, then you can wait and level her up. If not, now we get to the ones that are, are used current trials. We start with Sir Gwen. He creates eight blue gems and brown gems and summons one to three random swords edge. Obviously this is gonna be more useful more of your Swords Edge troops that faded him up. He gains three to all skills in the last position, but I wouldn't necessarily put him there unless you're absolutely certain that there aren't anything on 
troops on the other side that can specifically target the last troop. If that's the case, then put them in the And finally, last but certainly not, Queen Isabel, which deals damage to the first enemy equal to an ally's attack. So basically collecting an ally's ally to do damage. Then she gives magic-based attack and armor to that group. Then gives three to eight mana to all allies other than her. This is actually pretty good because it allows you to stack armor and attack on Group. So it's it, it can be pretty useful. Also, she gains for the people, which all humans gain two armor at the start of each turn. A lot of the knights are human slash knight, just like her. So uh, that will that is a pretty that is a decent um, bonus trait. To so let's go to my four more. I'm gonna be a little bit flexible with this a little bit because people I want to highlight just in case. This one, Queen's Herald, is going to be a little bit more for your guild, guild event. Queen's Herald does magic-based damage to an enemy, and if the enemy is boss, deal three times to five percent, five times damage based on her ascensions. And there's a 50% chance to summon Queen Isabel, which we just saw. Uh, now, she is the God one of the God Slayers for Sword's Edge, and we are going to get another one part of the event. So having her available, if you happen to have her, will allow you to use her and the, whatever the new one. I'll kind of give you some clues on why I think I've read, but this is uh, this is somewhere where if you happen to have her, then possibly go with her and the new God Slayer rather than having two copies. Next, we have Sir Quentin Hadley, which is a very useful, even outside of Sword's Edge, possibly the most uh, useful troop outside of Sword's Edge that we talk about in the he converts purple gems to yellow and green gems to skulls, deals magic-based damage to two random enemies. What's most important for him is that third trait, Griffin Commander, where all knight allies start with 50% mana. That's going that something that makes him very useful for every knight based. So if you if you don't have him, start looking for him and chest he is a legendary and if you do have them level and trade him now next I have Ulf Harrigan Ulf Harrigan does magic based true damage to three random enemies the enemy is wounded he does 10 extra damage and summons Ulf's mascot which will do rather whether the sentence he gets true banding, which gains one to all of his skills for each ally with the banding trait. His mascot will also trade it, which is which is pretty good. Now, if you're wondering what the elf's mascot is, actually one of the troops in Swords Air. I'll just put him on the screen really quick. So what he does is deals magic-based damage to the last enemy. I told you, be careful, make sure to darn troops that target the left. Ulf Harrigan on my team inflict two stacks of bleed on the enemy as that banding which gains two armor free. So those two are good to have. If you if you have one, make sure you have both. Um, you can also kind of go with the same route with Shadow Dragon. You'd rather go that way. Shadow Dragon poisons all enemies, deals magic based true damage to a random enemy. Eight random enemies. You transforms all yellow gems to purple to boost the effect. He uses yellow and purple, so it kind of consolidates at his mana pool. He also gains bonus purple mana for every purple gem match. 
He also gains one attack when matching purple gem. So he gets a little bit stronger as the as the battle goes on. So he's actually a pretty decent troop to have. If you're going to use him, you might consider Eleanor. Eleanor creates 11 purple gems, so she gives more, puts more purple gems on board for the Shadow Dragon, and her magic, uh, her mana cost is actually low at nine. She uses green, which which the dragon does, but also uses. So put her behind the Shadow Dragon if you. But uh, but anyway, that's that would be ideas for that. Now a quick look at the mythics. We have the Champion of Guard, the Champion of Anu, and the Guardian of Law. If you don't have any of these, and you're looking for one of these top of the Bull Forge to get you. Kingdom Power for Sword's Edge. Honestly, even though it's the one I don't have, I would probably go for Champion of Anu if I Champion of Anu reduces damage from spells by 60%. All blue allies, which itself gain one to all stats this turn. He silences, stuns, and drains all mana from the enemy, deals magic-based damage to them, and all enemies below them. Now, in comparison, Champion of Guard, he gains magic-based armor, and if there are 13 or more skulls, he gets double the armor, then creates a mix of 22 blue and red gems. So he kind of kind of refreshes the the um, mana pool for himself by doing that. He gets a spell block, which is okay. He also reduces damage from spells by 10, which is good, and Red allies gain one to all stats at the start of each turn, which will him. And if he is on the same team champion of Anu, then they both use red. Although having them both on the same team is going to cost quite a Not really sure you'd want to. So if you have champion of guard, you might not need champion of much. You have the champion of Anu the versus true as well. And the guardian of law, I got this from the chest and I rarely use it, to be honest. The Beyond Reproach, which reduces damage from spells by 80%, sounds good, but it's not good if he doesn't get targeted by people. Just leave it at that for me. I, I would just say if it, he should be the third one you pick for So but yeah, and even then, these are kind of these aren't like the top tier of Mythics that you can get in the Soul Forge, but I would go Champion of Anu, Champion of Garden, Champion, Guardian of Law, only if you. Anyway, that's enough of the, enough of the troops. Let's go ahead and take a look at the weapons. So there are currently 15 total weapons in Forge Edge, with more coming as we begin Sword Edge week. Uh, the two, there's a lot of good weapons. There that can really help you out. I'm going to highlight some of them. The Flail of Guard loads magic based blue gems and grants a random status effect to all allies, then summons the Sporge Edge. The traits are kind of negligible. Bless myself is kind of nice. Um, Ebun's Hammer is the other option available to you, which also explodes blue, grants a random status effect. Knight allies, then summons a knight troop. And this one gains barrier, which I, in my opinion, a little bit better. But if I was to take, if I was, to, I could only have one, go with flip, just, uh, just because of exploding one. Keep in mind that the big difference between two, flail of guard gives you based on project allies, Ebon's hammer is based on knights, Cuban's hammer you can use outside the forge edge, whereas flow of guard allows you to use dragons. Get the idea. Worth noting, there's also the portal chain, which explodes blue gems, grants a random status to all humans, and then summons a human. And it also has the barrier. Good for if you're making a human true human team. I do see this recommended human. 
games on YouTube. I'm so it's it is a good one to have, even though it's not right along the lines of what the primary troop type is for Sword's Edge. Uh, also worth noting is Chain Sword. This is one that does damage to one enemy, boosted by night allies, and creates a mix of blue and red gems for each night ally. Barriers itself, pretty good. Uh, we also have the edged blade, which is right here. And that one deals magic-based damage. And the same thing, this one is boosted by, boost by Forge Edge allies, creates blue and yellow. And then it gives all allies two mana and does a bunch of other things. I, I think for this one, maybe the cane sword might have a little bit of an edge given uh, given the different traits, but the edge blade is is pretty. And then, I know I'm talking a lot about weapons, but this one is this one is important. Anu's scepter. I do believe you get this by uh, by collecting or by by leveling up your. Mana masteries, your gem masteries, I guess. Uh, but this is really good because it's pretty, pretty low in terms of mana cost at nine. It destroys all gems of a chosen color, which makes it a really good mana collect weapon. And it enchants itself, and it gives one mana to all all allies. So really, what and it cleanses. It. What what is there not to like about? It? That's right. So make sure you so, so you probably already have it so just make sure you the faction weapon that would be available during the faction assault will be secrets of the script which steals magic based life from two weakest enemies and summons random undead probably a little bit more useful for undead teams rather than swords edge team i'd i'd say this is a pretty good book to pick up anything that summons uh, troops is is good in my my opinion. Also creates a bone storm, so good for skull based teams as well. Then we have the class weapon, which is actually better than it looks. It's a shield called Serve and Protect, which gains 45 armor, pulls yourself to the first position, and all other allies gain barrier. Which means once you've done this, all of the all of the Troops on your team have barrier, except for your hero, which is now at the front of the. Sounds bad, doesn't it? Well, look at the look at the upgrades. The very last upgrade you get is barrier myself, which, in my opinion, it's a little shaky in my it's a little shaky in my opinion because basically, spell is basically has a big gap, big a big defect. And your last upgrade basically fixes it. Once you have it at level 10, now you're barriering everyone and you're gaining 45 armor for your hero, which is now in the front of the line. Your hero probably should be in the front of the line anyway because you're usually back to use anyway. And that is almost it. There's one more weapon to kind of look at, and that is the Curse Breaker Sword, which does 52 damage or magic based damage, first and last end. It has four potential level, and like all Curse Breaker weapons, it blesses all blue allies, enemies since weapon. It has Curse Breaker, which cleanses all allies. It also has Tidal, which submerges your heroes, so your hero can't. Hit by any of those hit all troops. As far as cleansing, this is kind of a kind of a offensive way to get a cleanse all allies effect on your team, but it it can be useful. It can be useful if you have it. That would probably be fun. okay. Let's talk a little bit about the night class. There, so the traits really don't mean a lot for this particular trait class. Um, they're, they're nothing nothing spectacular. As for the talent trees, they general, there's generally not a lot to say about them, but it does give you a kind of an idea of what you should do if you're 
intending to use the night class. If you're going to use the night class, you kind of want, there's a lot of bonuses that allow your hero to get extra stats for being in the position. For the most part, as far as gem help, you're going to get a light storm at the start of battle with level 20, and you'll get bonus yellow mana from yellow gem matches at 70. Yellow is not, not the best of mana to focus on for Swords Edge, but it can be useful in the right team. But overall, Knight class is just one of those classes that doesn't do a lot that other classes do better. Take a quick look at the pets. Right now, there's just these eight of them. Your Kingdom Boost pet is Scrappy, and your there are two team bonus swords right now. First, you've got Griffling, which gives a team bonus all yellow, all unique yellow troops. And you also got Toy Soldier, which gives you a team bonus if all of if you've got a lot of money. And your faction pet, this one, Manito Mori. This is the one that goes along with Crypt Keepers. So, Let's take a quick look at Crypt Keepers before we wrap things up. Crypt Keepers is right over here, kind of again on the west side of the map. It's like Sword's Edge. It is a purple and red restriction uh, faction. So we've just done depths. By the time we've just done depths of sin, you can basically just use the same team that you used for that faction's alt for this faction. If they have the same right up here. So Crypt Keepers, there's five of them because we've already had the faction expansion for Crypt Keepers. There are two I'm going to, to, to highlight a little bit just in case you need them. This one is a just in case because it does count as a knight. So it will help you with a lot of could help you with some it does true bait, true damage to an enemy. It deals double the damage of status effect. And as you're doing pure faction, other troops that actually put status effects on the troops on the other side. This one might be a little bit more situational, but we have Lady Marana who also counts as right. And she does 40, she does magic based damage to an enemy with a flat 10% chance to stay them boosted by 2% for each purple gem. And she steals two attack from the first enemy on every four or five gem matches. So you're basically weakening the attack of the group that is that the other side is counting on to, to skull them. So that can actually be pretty good as long as the other side is not switching their their team around. But overall, Lady Marana, particularly as far as, as far as faction legendaries go, is a pretty solid one to get. I would recommend getting her. Wouldn't be one of the first ones you're gonna get, but it cert but it shouldn't be one of it certainly be one of the last either. So let's take one last one quick look at what you might be able to do for the raid box your weekly event. And this is why I would kind of go with right now. I have the Anu Scepter in the first position. I have Queen Heralds in third and Sir Quentin Hadley in now You might be wondering why is the Dragon Knight there? Dragon Knight is there just to fill the position that's going to be filled by the new God Slayer we're going to get for them. So you could do it that way or you could have two of the new God Slayer and then put them in two middle positions. You don't have to put either of them in the first position because the boss tends to hide in the fourth position. The boss is going to be long gone before any of your, any, anyone gets to do their third trait, which does skull, bait, skull damage for Keep that in mind. I think it's a good way to, to save some gems, but it might not be 
But if this video is for you, please consider leaving it a like. Consider subscribing to this channel and following me on Twitch if you're seeing more. Uh, look, leave a comment below. Let me know everything I got wrong. And know that Gems of loves to change things all the way up until the last minute, particularly when we have epic trials that we had before. And I'll see you next week.